Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're going to talk about UConn extending Dan Hurley's contract. Not quite the contract that he was offered when he was offered uh, quite a sizable contract over with the Lakers, but a very good one nonetheless. Anthony Edwards, lacking no confidence. We're going to talk about him ahead of this Paris Olympics, well as EA Sports College Football 25, the video game. Almost here. We're only a week away from the early drop. I'm extremely excited. I know you are too. We're going to talk about them officially dropping the official gameplay. Super excited. This game looks as awesome as I, I could have hoped for. Can't wait to get my hands on it. And we're going to talk about the most likely in college football to win each conference in 2024. Let's go ahead and get into it. But first of all, go ahead and bring in my co-host. We got Jeremy over here. We're in totally different states today. How you doing, Jeremy? Yeah, you're uh, you're down the south. I'm up north a little bit, but that doesn't stop us from doing another episode for you, ladies and gentlemen. But doing pretty good. Had a had a fun Fourth of July weekend. I hope everybody who's tuning in had a fun filled Fourth of July weekend as well. But um, yeah, it's definitely been crazy to see what the what they've been talking about, especially for Dan Hurley and his contract extension for. For UConn, then um, now obviously, then leading up to the Olympics, I know that's right around the corner here. Then everybody's anticipating to obviously see the athletes and everybody compete in the Olympics and see what everybody's got to bring it to the table to try and bring home the goal for their their corresponding country. Then when you mentioned the um, when you mentioned game coming out, I got I'm not gonna lie, I kind of got a little bit of a chill. It doesn't matter how many times you talk about it, it just still gives you chills just because it's been so long since we finally had a game like this. And um, going to obviously our final topic, it's definitely gonna be fun. Obviously, some new teams and some new conferences, and surprised a little bit what me and Josh are gonna be talking about tonight for who we have to pick for winning each conference. But Josh, I know we got a lot to talk about, so I'm gonna cut the chit chat and let's get kicking with it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm really excited. And yeah, I mean, just talking about all of this stuff, especially when we get into college football 25, I mm -hmm. had to go get the new system and I didn't realize like how much different even some of the games on there are, are compared yeah. to like I was playing Madden 24 and I haven't played it in a, a hot minute, but uh, I hopped on and was playing that on the new system and thought like, oh my gosh, this is like totally different. Just overall gameplay and everything. But before we get too far, I want to first remind everybody, if you're looking to look good on the golf course, uh, then you know where to go. You can go to MahlerBros.com, uh, an awesome sponsor of this podcast. And the best way to, to support us is by going and supporting Mahler Bros Golf because Mahler Bros Golf has polos that look good and feel good with a lightweight, stretchy material that hugs your body and also keeps you cool out there on the golf course, even on those hot summer days. And, you know, looking at the Mahler Bros uh, signature polos, they're guaranteed to make you look better, but we always tell you that it's up to you to play better. Uh, you go over to MahlerBros.com and check out their polos because on a hot summer day on the golf course, there's no polo that you'd rather wear than a Mahler Bros golf signature polo. Mahler Bros golf has a large catalog of polos and designs that are never ending when it comes to just adding new designs on there. Uh, and you've got all kinds of awesome designs, whether you want a loud design, a sleek design, or even just a subtle design, you can go over to MahlerBros.com and check it out. They also have fun t-shirts like the one I'm wearing right now. Uh, it's got a fun design. I don't even remember which one I've got on right now. I don't look at my There's back There's so many often. you never remember. <laughs> so go check out their other fun t-shirts, uh, hats, tumblers, even coffee. That's right. The first ever that we know of golf themed coffee, amazing coffee. Go check them out at MahlerBros.com. Uh, and you can use the code rising two there for 10% off. Go check it out. Uh, they oh, also a really good deal that you want to take, uh, take advantage of right now. If you buy two polos, you'll get a third polo. So you have to select three polos. You buy two polos, get one completely free. So an additional one for free. The third one is free. If you buy two, just use the code America 1776. That's the code I should be promoting right now. Uh, I'm just looking <laughs> at an older code. You can still get 10% off with that rising too, but go to MahlerBros.com. That's M-A-H-L-E-R-B-R-O-S.com and use the code America1776. That offer is good through the 18th. So go check that out. You buy two polos, add a third one to your cart. You use that code America1776 and get that third polo completely free. If you're a golfer, I promise you, you will not be disappointed with the amazing products that we've got over at Mahler Bros Golf. So go check them out, M-A-H-L-E-R-B-R-O-S.com, and use that code America1776, 1776. Check that out. But let's go ahead and get into it, Jeremy, because like we alluded to, we have got a ton to get into when it comes to the world of sports. And as always, 
we love to keep you guys completely up to date in all the sports mm-hmm. news. First, starting off with Dan Hurley. UConn agreed to a six-year extension, you know, extending him from six years from today. $50 million contract, not quite the $70 million, I believe it was, that he was offered over at the Lakers. But we know we knew that the reason why he turned down that offer is not only did he know he could probably get a better paycheck from UConn just because of what the, the Lakers were offering, probably not to match what the Lakers were offering, but we knew that he, he could get a good contact contract, but also we just know that he loves coaching college basketball. He loves coaching UConn college basketball. And I, it, we, we've speculated, but uh, it, it seems pretty clear that there's only one team that he's really got his eyes on. And maybe he's got a couple of others that he might leave college basketball for, but he loves college basketball. I saw this article where Dan Hurley said, it's an honored coach basketball at UConn and to represent the world class institution and the great state of Connecticut. And he also said, we're extremely proud of the championship program that we've, re- that we've rebuilt for our supporters and fans. We will continue to obsessively pursue championships and historic success while continuing to develop great young men bleed blue. So he's not just taking this, you know, and, and coming back thinking he can get a great contract. He passed up a better contract to come back to his juggernaut school and f- fulfill the dynasty that he's already started there. I-, I absolutely love this. I love Dan Hurley. I love the fact that he's back at UConn uh, going to try to make it a three-peat and-, and see how many teams he can beat by double digits there uh, in-, in the, the March Madness tournament. Teams, that I think they'll be beating by double digits, especially with Dan Hurley at the helm. I mean, you look at Dan Hurley as a coach. He's been an unbelievable asset to this UConn basketball program. And coming off coming off a of back-to-back national championships with UConn. I mean, he knows how to get these players going into the right direction, how to coach them properly. I mean, you've seen other college coaches in the past where they get players that have really really good potential and good caliber of playing basketball and you see them go off into the NBA and it's a complete night and day difference. Don't get me wrong. Obviously it's going to be a night and day difference when you go to college to the NBA, but it just seems like a little bit of that could be from this coaching aspect. And I mean, you look at what Dan Hurley has um, look, look at the players coached in the past and you see a lot of these guys now in the NBA and they're making really, really good representations of themselves. And don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't diss Dan Hurley one ounce for, for what he did for denying the contract to stay with UConn. I mean, he he feels so much like home because obviously it is his home for the UConn Huskies. He's been there for a long time, and he just he just doesn't want to leave that, that home. And I do not blame him one out just because it just seems like – it's kind of like another version like um, – like Nick Saban leaving Alabama, it was just kind of like it would be one of those moments to where whenever the time comes from where Dan Hurley leaves UConn, it's going to be kind of like another one of those situations, I personally think. But hats off in everything that he's obviously done for UConn, and I wish him nothing but the best and further into his coaching career for the UConn Huskies. And I, I, I'd be calling myself a liar, but I can definitely see UConn possibly doing a 3 P here. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what other team you look at and see as dominant, and and he's right no. too. He's he's rebuilt this program from you know they, the they, ground they, up. They've, yeah, they they really didn't have a whole lot when he came in, and to no. take them as far as he has, you know, and and not just winning two in a row, but doing it in a fashion, winning by double digits in every single mm-hmm. one of those tournament games, that's absolutely outstanding. So yeah, just absolutely insane what Dan Hurley has done there with the UConn Huskies, and I love to see him come back, and I love not just to see him come back. And say, I love UConn basketball. I love being a UConn college basketball coach so much that I turned down the job. That's cool. But I love even more that UConn said, hey, we want you to turn down that job because we believe that we're the best fit. And I believe that that's why he turned it down is because he loves UConn. He loves coaching there. There's very few NBA teams that he would go and coach. Because let's be honest, NBA coaching jobs are not the same. You don't have the same control over your team as you do in college, uh, you more or less just get in there and, Hey, good job guys. Let's keep this up. Yeah. You just keep doing your thing. Maybe we can play a little better. You don't actually get in there and coach the guys. So I think that's one aspect, but on top of that, I love to see Dan Hurley get paid. I love UConn. Uh, you know, I love the fact that I see UConn come in and say, Hey, Dan, we love you as our coach. We want to keep you around. We're going to sign you not just to a one year extension on there, not just another, uh, maybe two years. We're going to sign you six year extension right now. And we're going to pay you $50 million 
Uh, I think I saw something like he's set to to make four hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, just great, great money, and and it, for a guy that deserves it. Uh, mm-hmm. So you know, one of the best in college basketball, and and currently I would say the best in college basketball. I, I don't know. Who, who's, There's who's nobody that? to be honestly the best in college basketball. I don't know who you could really say. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I I just I don't know who else you would throw up there. Um, but let's go ahead and move on. We know that it's 2024, which means we have the Olympics coming back. I, I mean, I, I'm a little excited. Uh, you know, I, I like to sit there and cheer for America. You know, regardless. And I saw a little bit of the water polo going on. I'm not sure if they're actually in. I, I don't think the Olympics have started, so I don't know if this is just all like qualification Boom. rounds i suppose that's what i'm assuming I it know. is i it, it, it sounds crazy but watch the side by side i saw one where people put a silhouette of michael jordan and a silhouette of anthony edwards and they, they were saying hey guess which one is which and a lot of people were having a hard time like man they, they do have a very similar style of play their their motions are similar there's been conspiracy theories that he is michael jordan's son that you know long lost son that nobody knew about and it's all like this cover-up story to keep him uh you know protected i don't buy into a lot of that but he does have that style of play Uh, and i do think he has a similar heart as michael jordan too but one thing that we see from him i i want to get your your thoughts on this do you do you hear lucky or confident in this statement so uh uh, Anthony Edwards was asked on Sunday about his role with the Team USA at the Paris Games, uh, where he's going to play alongside of guys like LeBron, Steph, and uh, Kevin Durant. So uh, he says, I'm still the number one option. Y'all might look at it differently, but I don't. Knowing what I know about Anthony Edwards and what I've heard from him in the past, I might be hearing this wrong, but I hear a lot of cockiness. But he can back it up. That's that's why I struggle with this because there's guys that I've seen in the past that, uh, you know, maybe you look at Cam Newton, uh, you know, and, and how great he was, uh, or even you know Jameis Winston, uh, or you know one one that I can compare to my school. I'm an Oklahoma fan. Baker Mayfield, mm-hmm. pretty cocky to most people. I call it yeah. confidence. So there is a fine line. Uh, I think with Jameis, uh, Jameis Winston felt more cocky to me. You know, maybe it's just me being biased and saying Baker was confident, not cocky from Anthony Edwards. And and I think uh, another quote that I saw here, he says, I just go out there and and be myself, shoot my shots, play defense. They've got to fit in to play around me. That's how I feel. That's the kind of comments that I hear cockiness coming from Anthony Edwards. But some people might see it differently. I like the guy. I think he's a phenomenal athlete. Do you hear confidence or cockiness coming from Anthony Edwards? You have a little bit of both here. In my- I mean, I, to, to be cocky, right? Oh, cocky, to be confident in yourself. I mean, you and I have seen Anthony Edwards play, and he is an unbelievable basketball player. He in knows person. how to find – yeah. He knows how to find the right openings. He knows when to be there, and he knows how to put up a great shot. I mean, don't get me wrong. Anthony Edwards, the Ant-Man, he is an unbelievable basketball player, but – you might know this, Josh, but I, I don't. How many times has – is this Anthony Edwards' debut for going to the Olympics this week? This would be his first time, uh, correct? I don't think he went when he was in – he would have been in college last time. So let's see, so, four years ago in 2020. I don't think he would have been there. And that's so I think what this I thought. Would, I think this would be his debut, I, I, okay. I do believe. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Like so He's only you, 22 years old. Yeah, that is true. He seems like he's a lot older, but he's only a 22-year-old – and I wouldn't say legend, but an unbelievable basketball player. Turning I into mean, a legend. Yeah, he's going to be turning into a legend 100%. But, I mean, y- if you can back it up, you can definitely say what you want, but you got to be careful with what you say. I mean, I understand this is going to be your debut, obviously, in Paris for the, for the U.S. Olympics, but you look at guys like – LeBron, that's all I'm going to say, just because we all know LeBron has been in this situation numerous times. He he knows how to back it up just because he's he's another one of those situations where he can be a little bit cocky, but you morely see the true sportsmanship side of LeBron just because of how great of a basketball player he is. Now, going back to the Ant-Man here, he can, he can say a lot, but he has a great basketball IQ, so... Overall, he he can talk, but he, he can definitely back it up. So either way, like I said, in my opinion, it's a little bit of both. But we're just gonna have to obviously see and find out, and just hopefully, um, hopefully the words don't come back and bite him a little bit. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you at all. You know, I do think there's there is a little bit of both. I just I I definitely I mean the, the way that he comes across, he's one of those players that I I hate that I love him and I also love that I hate him. I know it's like <laughs> man, yeah. such a weird because he's he's phenomenal. He's he's one of the best current talents in the NBA. You know, oh, I would easily. say man, I, I would dare to say maybe even top five player in the NBA overall right now. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'd, I'd have to really go down the list. But let me read off this stacked, and I repeat, stacked roster real quick for the uh, USA team, you know, the USA basketball team roster. So we've got Bam Adebayo from center from Miami, Evan Booker, guard from Phoenix, Devin Curry, Burber. Anthony Davis, KD, Anthony Edwards, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Halliburton, Drew Holiday, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, and Jason Tatum. Who who is your number one option on on that that squad? I mean, that is a stacked squad. Who's who's your number one option? Who's the guy that you say down to the down to the wire? I need somebody to score the ball. Who who are you going with? Right? I, I, they were going I think you're yeah, yeah, was I think it is Denver. Yep. Yeah. So he says, you know, so you can call that cocky, but there was definitely a little up. bit of confidence there, and uh, you know, I think it was game. It was game four because they were they were uh, evading the sweep. They were trying to evade the sweep uh, against Dallas, and he he acted very cocky. People would say, but ended up winning that game to push it to game five. Mm-hmm. Cocky or confident? So I think there is a fine line there. But when you look at this roster, as as talented as as it is, and I think there are several guys you could give the ball in the last second and expect them to go out there with that clutch gene and win. Anthony Edwards might be on the top of my list. Hard to pick, honestly. But, I mean, if I had to honestly give somebody, I wouldn't be surprised if he's on the top of my list either. I mean, he's a young player. He has great, like I said, great basketball IQ. He's very mobile. And he's not afraid to put up a really, really hard shot. And he can easily go and fight for his own rebound. We've seen that numerous times in in the NBA this last season. We've even seen it live in person where he'll put up a shot and he'll go back down below the paint and try and fight for his own rebound. I mean, the the ant man is definitely he you may call him the ant, but when he's on the court, he is definitely not an ant. He will be in your he'll be like a thorn in your side the entire time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see this whole squad get together. Um, yeah. because it's it's similar to the all star break where you have all stars come out there and you just have a bunch of you know two stacked teams but the all-star you don't get any defense here in the olympics you're fighting you're trying to rep your country Mm -hmm. trying to rep the u.s of a america can't finish (laughs) that one but uh anyways Uh, yeah looking at this squad this is so much different than just the all-star break because they're going to go out there and fight and and actually try to win uh so i think this is going to be a lot of fun to watch this team I'm, i'm excited for it for sure to it you know there's so many fun memories growing up well, you know, when, when we were younger of USA basketball and it's back, very excited for it, but let's get into it. Another one that I'm very excited about EA, EA sports, college football, 25, 12, let's see, it'll be 25, right? 25. Yeah, five dropping very soon. It's going to drop, uh, I believe the early, the early access next Tuesday. So if you already bought it, you already pre-ordered it, you get it next Tuesday. If I remember correctly, if, if my dates are correct in my brain, so I'm extremely excited okay. Told my boss, I, I, I will still work. <laughs> we have to be either at the hotel or home, but you know, at a decent time, time where I can hop on and keep on playing. And I, one thing I want to let everybody know: we are going to plan on doing some content with it. So, hey, if if you want to join in with us and you want to play against us and and maybe help us make some content by playing against us, whatever the case may be, please reach out. But uh, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to see it yet. They dropped the official gameplay. It was uh, a guy named uh, I think it's, and I don't want to I don't want to say his name wrong, uh, and I can't remember his name off off the top of my head. Um, but it's it's a, a YouTuber that's known for doing college football video game content. Uh, he does a lot of NCAA fourteen uh, content right now because that's the last one to drop. Right. So uh, it was him playing against Anthony Edwards uh, from uh, from. Uh, uh, Michigan, the running back from Michigan. So they were playing on there. And so obviously Anthony Edwards playing as his team, his squad going in there. And so it was a lot of fun. You got to see the mechanics. You got to understand the gameplay. We had a lot of these deep dives where they explained it to you, but didn't actually show you the actual gameplay. And it looks phenomenal. So if you guys haven't, I want to show it, but I don't know how much I can 
without getting copyrighted because all of this is super touchy right now. It has only allowed like a handful Very of people to even drop any kind of footage. I, th I think the guy that I'm talking about, the YouTube guy that was in it, uh, and, and I'm sorry for not knowing his name off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they even told him like very limited of what he can, and he was the guy playing. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm super ex excited. I think it lives up to the hype based on what I see. I think it, aesthetically it looks beautiful. Uh, I think they had so many things right about the big house, about the entrance into the big house. You see some of the mechanics with the players. One of the things that I think I'm most excited about that makes it feel so much more realistic than it even looks on, on the screen, you know, from looking at the graphics, the fact that you see some of the pre-play moving around, uh, they, they made an audible, and he the quarterback looks over to the sideline to get the call from the coach, then makes the play and changes it. That's how realistic this game is, and it's going to outdo. I, I, we have been playing Madden just because we have to <laughs> for so long. I'm so ready to finally play as college football game teams, you know, and, and one, one fun thing is the online dynasty being able to start with a smaller team and try to build them up into something. Uh, I remember back in the day, I used to love picking either the NIU Huskies just because I liked the Huskies. I <laughs> uh, thought that was a cool uh, mascot or uh, one other one that I liked was old dominion just because oh, they're a little nobody team, so. uh, either on road to glory or, or uh, on uh, you know a, a dynasty. I've never done online dynasty. Blake and I were talking Neither about that. We're, we're trying to work out the kinks and how we want to do the online dynasty, how much we want to record for content, how much we're just going to play and talk about it. Uh, you know, so we're, we're trying to figure that out, but we are going to plan uh, for this Thursday's episode. So on Wednesday, when we record, uh, we're going to plan to pick our team. So we're going to have a little randomized wheel to pick one of the group of five conferences. So we're going to be assigned one of those conferences. Uh, and then we are going to be assigned a team within those conferences. Each of us are going to be from a different. So one of us might get the Mac. One of us might get the conference USA. One of us, the American. Uh, so it's, it's going to be all over the place. We're going to all have a small school to start off with, build on. One thing that I'm bummed about, uh, and obviously, Jeremy, you know, like, because you have the PS5, I'm bummed that the online dynasty isn't cross play, but, it's surprising. I mean, you can play cross play in regular mode, like online. You and I could hop online uh, and play against each other online, but not in the online dynasty. That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, that's uh, what you can't. Me. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense. But super excited. If you haven't seen the official gameplay and you're pumped for this game as much as we are, go check that out because I am. I am so pumped. I, I'm extremely excited. Uh, I'm one of these guys that I feel like even if the graphics or the gameplay doesn't live up to the hype, which I think it does based on what I saw, even if it doesn't live up to the hype, I, I get to play college sports again. And, and that's just something you can't beat. It was always number one ahead of Madden. I always thought it was better than Madden, which is so weird. But I also saw some things that because this is going to be so much better in so many different ways, different, different fuel and everything, they're going to try to make Madden better because they have similar dev teams working together trying to create this and stuff. So uh, really fun. But if you want to tune in and see what teams and conferences we get selected as, whether Blake can make it with us or not, it's going to be me, Jeremy, and Blake. I thought about adding some other guys. I couldn't find anybody for sure that wanted to jump in. I reached out to some of the Herd Act. Uh, well, I reached out to our producer, talked to him and see if he knew anybody. He didn't right off the top of his head. So I said, ah, it's okay. If somebody wants to and you know somebody, let me know and we'll try to get Somewhere that working up. out. But, you know, but... For right now, it's just the three of us. Uh, we're going to all be different conferences, small team, try to build them up. So I'm excited to see who we get. What conference? I mean, do you have a conference off the top of your head that you'd want to be a part of? Honestly, can't, can't be any of the, can't be, uh, can't be SEC, ACC, Big 12, or Big 10. Anything at this point, just because I'm, it, I could say I'm thrilled, but that would be a lie. I'm more than thrilled just to get my hands back into this kind of an aspect. I, mean, I remember back when we were younger kids, obviously when you were living in Indiana at the time and the, the times that you would come and visit, whether it be during Thanksgiving or Christmas every year. I mean, if we weren't literally eating turkey at the dinner table, we were always playing college football. I mean, it's, yeah, dude, Granny got the Xbox there at, the, at her house. Yeah, yeah, we were able exactly. to hop on her Xbox there. Like, heck, great addition to the living room because now the kids are just going to take <laughs> up having to move it into her sewing room just because, yeah. you know, they were trying to, to watch TV out there by themselves or just, you know, adults hang out out there. Dude, we literally took over that TV and that Xbox and we 
we would literally be going on for hours and hours and hours and we didn't get sick and tired of it one single allowance. But like I said, Josh, I can honestly go with any anybody that gets tossed my way just because I'm just excited just to get everything going. And it's it's been a long overdue thing and I'm just I'm just anxious. If you if you said the date next week we'll be getting our hands on this and we'll be we'll be playing like we used to when we were younger. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because it's the same day that the new Twister movie comes out. Oh, really? Okay. And I'm super excited about that movie too because Here, that was one of my favorites. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking Glenn Powell. Uh, he's a really good actor, and I believe he had something to do with production too, uh, which I just watched the one, and it was kind of like a quirky movie with him and Sydney. Uh, what's her name? Sydney Sweeney? Sydney Sweeney. I yeah. saw a lot of good reviews on it, so I was like, whatever. I'm looking for just a goofy movie to watch, and it seems silly. And it, it was pretty good. Like it was like one of those like really cringy, funny ones. But you know, it kind of gave me the the I you know kind of the wedding crashers kind of comedy. Uh, so that you know, I, I thought he was. A, I think he's a pretty good actor. He was also in uh, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm 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 excited about that movie. Uh, and I think it looks like they they did a really good job based on the trailers. And I've heard a lot about that movie. But back to the video game. The video game early <laughs> access drops the same day so it's going to be a busy day for me i want to bring up because it's too early to make our final predictions and win totals and stuff like that but we want to get into college football because we're in that dead spot right now where we've got baseball to talk about and i guess olympics coming up and we can kind of preview some of that kind of stuff but mm -hmm. I, overall there's really not a whole lot in the sports world other than some of the big news dropping uh you know and so college football getting into it conference championships it's going to be big because to win your conference championship this year is one of the biggest things, uh, you know, it, it means more this year, more than any other year in the past uh, that I can recall, because you win your conference championship and you automatically get an automatic bid to the college football playoff and you get that first week by and you get home field advantage in your first playoff game. So this is huge. You win mm -hmm. your conference as a power, I guess, power four conference. You get it. So ACC, SEC, Big Ten, and Big 12, all going to get an automatic bid. So starting off, we're going to start off with the ACC, kind of go in alphabetical order, I guess I'll do, just because it's easier for me to, to sort it out that way. <laughs> I'm just going to list off the top five and kind of give it to you. Man, I, I kind of want to go a little further down, um, but I'll give you the top five. Starting off in the ACC, the most likely to win the conference would be Florida State at plus 282, Clemson at plus 350, Miami at plus 400, Louisville at plus 624, and NC State at plus 661. I do want to jump to one that I think is maybe a little bit of a – I think you could consider them a dark horse, but then they're new to the conference. Coming in, SMU at plus 1,600. Ooh. I mean, I wouldn't want it, but I do like the odds for SMU to kind of squeeze their way in there. Uh, also, kind of throw in there, you've also got uh, Cal is now going to be in there. Uh, so you've got Cal as, as a new team. Um, so, I mean, looking at this uh, in the ACC, I, I'm a little shocked that Clemson isn't the the high the, the best odds the best. just because I think they, they return more than Florida State does. You know, we, we saw what Florida State, you know, lost just before their bowl game last year. So that does shock me a little bit, but I think they're pretty high on Coach Norvell down there. Uh, and I, I think they, they expect quite a bit. Who you, who you like in there and the, and the odds for the ACC? Before you said the top top five, I was kind of picking a little bit on the Clemson side of the things for the ACC. But, I mean, you did bring up a really good point for some of these new teams, like you said, for SMU and Stanford even coming in as well. I mean, these, yeah, that's these, two, team these two teams that could easily make their way into these new conferences, they could definitely be a dark horse situation. I mean, you look at in the conference from what they were recently in, I mean, now this is a whole new ball game and a whole new situation for their conference. They could – all of a sudden, they can be – they can be the greatest team in the conference or they can be the absolute bridesmaid and just come up short. But I mean, Stanford, Stanford, you brought them up. The reason why I forgot to mention them is as a newcomer, they're at the bottom of the list at plus 50,000. <laughs> 50, wow. They have great belief in Stanford. Hey, if, you, if you put like a hundred bucks on them, you would be making bank. bank. 
What is it? Is that five hundred thousand dollars? Make it a half a million dollars for if Stanford will win the ACC. It's been a now, while since I've done some wait for college football to come back, so I'm, I'm, my math might be wrong. It has been a while since we've we've thrown some cheddar into these types of situations, but I mean, no, realistically, I I can definitely see Clemson just because of um of how much they're returning compared to like Florida State. I mean, even with Georgia Tech, um, Louisville, I. I could definitely maybe see Louisville trying to get their hat thrown in the rings, but my my mind my gut is still sticking strong with Clemson just because of their their big prerogative and just how they preach and how much they they show careness into their roster and I think they'll definitely go far and I wouldn't be surprised if they definitely do win this in the ACC. I had to do the math real quick just to make sure because I was I was getting a little fuzzy on my my uh, on your math uh, you know the betting math uh, and yeah and that's you you would you'd pull in fifty thousand uh, dollars if you bet a hundred dollars on it so that's just that's insane lever bank jeez you put you put a hundred dollars on them and they do win but that's I'll have to give a little a little tease out to my brother that's that's kind of like <laughs> a, a Britain a Britain type hey, a little tea, tease to him because he totally does that but he gets lucky on some of them sometimes that and is he'll true. win 500 bucks and just keep on betting you know 10 bucks and only spend 150 to get the 500 so I mean sometimes it works sometimes yeah. it's not a bad method but please be be responsible, responsible. when you're betting we want, we want to throw that out there uh, let's go over to the big 12 so from the ACC to the big 12. Kind of surprising here, too. I'm looking through here. I don't think this... Oh, okay. It was scrolled down on this screen for me weird. I was like, what? Mm. Uh, this is not right. This was looking better now that it let me roll back up to the proper point. But we've got Utah at plus 310. I like that. I think that's probably the safest bet when you look at it. And I'm going to tell you why. So that's my pick for the Big 12 early. Early, and so I, I might change it after we get through the you know up to the fall, uh, through some of these summer camps and stuff. But you've got Utah plus 310, K-State at plus 365. And by the way, guys, this isn't on a specific sports book. This is just an overall consensus. Um, so it's it may vary between sports books. But uh, Utah plus 310, K-State plus 365, OK State at plus 750, Kansas at plus 874. Um, so I mean, not great odds, but kind of crazy that they're at number four. And then at number five, you've got UCF at plus 900. Some honorable mentions to throw in there. You've got Arizona at plus 1,000. They're new to the conference. I think Texas Tech is one of those. You have to consider them a dark horse to me yeah. because nobody's nobody's really picking them, and they're sitting there at plus 1,293. And I, I was high on Texas Tech last year, and they didn't really show up. A lot of people want to probably take this one. It's Colorado at plus 97. I should I think they should be at like the plus, plus 50,000. But anyways, who's your fa- kind of surprising to me too that BYU is at the bottom of the list at plus twelve thousand five hundred. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't expect them to win it, but I think they should be ahead of maybe teams like Arizona State, maybe maybe above Cincinnati, Colorado yeah. for sure. I mean, um, that's that's one of those kind of stipulations to where you can look at all these teams now and you can at least see a couple to where they could line up. Like you mentioned, they could be a little bit higher in the odds favor. But, I mean, if I had to say somebody from the Big 12, guys, I'm st- I'm kind of EYU a little bit. That or – EYU, a not, big upset? Not, I mean, in my hopes and dreams. But I would honestly be surprised the if – The Storm and Mormons. The Storm and Mormons. I mean, with you also got to think for Kansas – just for what they are in the Big 12. I mean, they've obviously – I mean, look what they did against Oklahoma for the big surprise. Then, Don't remind me. Yeah, I know. I, but um, I, I was being couldn't, off there. Couldn't shut down that QB run, man. I mean, no, they, that, that's they, what happens. They couldn't. And, I mean, Kansas, they definitely brought their A game last year. I mean, they definitely did surprise a lot of people. But, I mean, I'm kind of sticking with, with, the, with Kansas here just because of how – how sneaky they can definitely be. I mean, they can have one bad week. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, any college team can have a bad week, obviously. But, I mean, Kansas is definitely one of those teams where they can come and back it up a little bit. Now, if I didn't have to say them, I would honestly kind of want to pick a little bit like uh, crap for saying this, but I can see Colorado. But Now you're just a no. So <laughs> I'm just going to cut you off there. Here's, there why I, here's why I say Utah. First year in the Big 12 – you got to remember they are they are one of the powerhouses from the former Pac-12. True. Got to remember that uh, they they True. owned the Pac-12 for many years, and especially with 
Coach Dillingham out there, uh, or sorry, Whittingham, uh, uh, Dillingham's down in Arizona, or Arizona, Arizona State. So, mm-hmm. uh, but anyways, not only do I, I like Whittingham out there and what kind of coach he is, what kind of atmos- atmosphere he's built and, and the, the overall community there, but here's their, their schedule. They got Southern Utah at home, Baylor at home, at Utah State. Their toughest one, Oklahoma State, at Oklahoma State, but that's probably the toughest one on their schedule. Probably. And let's be honest, you can still beat Oklahoma State at home just fine. And I don't know what's going on on that, that uh, hotel <laughs> hallway. Hey, could you hear that? Building something in the back. Yeah, I'm like... I trying to get in my door or something. Uh, but anyways, you don't know if Ollie Gordon's going to be in that game or not right now. True. We don't know what's going to happen. He's For those of you who don't know, he got a DUI, or a, a, a alleged, Plus, alleged DUI. DUI. Allegedly, it got a DUI. So if his arrest is something long term, or maybe he gets some sort of punishment Bond from or something, the, you know, from the league or whatever, I don't know what ha- what's happening. So if they don't have Ollie Gordon in that, I really like Utah going in uh, to Stillwater, stinky Stillwater, and, and beating them little <laughs> little brother Oklahoma State cowgirls. Yeah. But then you have Arizona at home, Arizona State at, at Arizona State, CU at home, at Houston. UIU at home, uh, at Colorado, Iowa State at home, and then at UCF, another maybe tough one. But I'm looking at this, I'm seeing 11 1. 11 and 1, because I can either give them Oklahoma State or UCF as a loss. Outside of that, I feel like they've got everything else in the bag. Yeah. So I really like Utah's chances. Right now, as it stands, I think they're my favorite to win the Big 12. Mm. So I, I like that a lot. Let's jump over to the Big 10, though, and we'll try to wrap this up real quick, kind of running. Short on time. So starting off, Ohio State number one expected that at plus one fifty five. That's man, that's like really low wow. odds. Uh, that's that's r- like they're really favored. But yeah. you got Oregon right behind them at two fifteen plus two fifteen, and then the next closest at number three, Penn State at plus five hundred. So over over you know double. Wow. You know, so they're they're twice as I guess it would be twice as unlikely to, to win the big big t- ten mm-hmm. more than that. Uh, and then you've got Michigan at plus 600. And then at number five, another big jump here, USC at plus 2,200. <laughs> From 600 to 2,200. Uh, a little uh, uh, a sneaker in there. I've got a weird a weird feeling about year number two under Matt Rule. They're sitting there at plus 5,500. I don't think they're going to win the conference. Do not misquote me. I do think they're going to be one of those sneaky teams that maybe makes – you know, it makes a couple of people upset about, you know, what, what just happened. Let's say they start off, I think it was four and O or five and O going into to Columbus, walking into that horseshoe and they mm-hmm. make a stink there in Columbus. I'm just saying, uh, I don't think that's going to happen either, but I don't know. Uh, not only that, but I think, uh, they play USC this year. I don't remember if that's at home or not. Uh, and then another team to kind of look there, you know, Iowa sitting there ranked number six, uh, for, uh, at plus four four thousand, uh, man, I don't I don't know. That's it's kind of that's different. Uh, I will say that. So I mean, overall, Ohio State's gonna win the Big Ten unless Oregon comes in there and just surprises everybody. I mean, you you, you can honestly just kind of give it to Ohio the Ohio State now, but unless Oregon pulls, uh, I wouldn't say a mirror, but pulls something out of the back of their hat. I mean. You obviously saw what Oregon was like this last season. They had some unbelievable talent, and they have some returners. But, I mean, it, you're not going to replace Bo. As as Blake would say, Bo Heisman. Bo Nix was. You got Dylan Gabriel, though, man. That, like, I, that is true. I, I don't think that's a big step down. I, don't, I, I think it's very, very close to being lateral. Maybe yeah. slightly downgraded, but not much. Not only that, that but you got the uh, – what's the young kid from UConn? We talked about him too that came oh, over, and I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, he came over from UConn. So, I mean, you've got another young kid right behind him. If if, if you're worried about injury, don't don't worry too much. Uh, yeah, so uh, they've got a couple of guys over there, and they've got a a, a very physical team. But yeah. let's show, go ahead and jump over to the best conference in college football. Uh, and I can say that confidently now because my Oklahoma Sooners are in – the best conference, the SEC, starting off number one, no surprise, Georgia at plus one ninety five. Then it jumps to plus three twenty for Texas. 
Uh, number three is Ole Miss at plus 624. I'm kind of shocked that they're so much lower than Texas, uh, lower odds. Um, but then you've got Alabama at number four, plus 774, and LSU at number five, at plus 924. Uh, kind, kind of, I, I like to see Texas up there at second in the odds. Uh, I do like to see that for uh, the, the little rival, uh, the little shorthorns over there. But uh, <laughs> one that I really like to see is Oklahoma plus 4,000. I don't think Oklahoma is going to win the SEC. I, I'm not going to say that once whatsoever. And I like I like where their odds are at. More more than that, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams ahead of them. So they're ranked number nine in the odds to win the SEC. That's the part that I like. I don't think they're going to win the SEC. I don't think they're going to get to the SEC championship game. But so many people counting Oklahoma out thinking seven wins, eight wins. They, that's seven and a half. Let me just say this right now because I'm, I'm going to be biased as hell right now and just give you my feelings straight up because I'm, I was, I was nervous about the transition into the SEC until I went over on, on the uptempo podcast with Blake and we were talking about Oklahoma and I was more or less just trying to tr- trying to give him the facts of what we have coming back, what we're, what, what you're going to see from Oklahoma. And I, I came across extremely confident in my team. Yeah. And the reason being is because I, I took a look at my team and I, I was like, dang, these Oklahoma Sooners are returning a lot of defensive guys back over on that side of the ball. And they add a couple of dogs over there. And then on top of that, you still got you. You got a very deep wide receiver room, and people are counting out that offensive line. But I look at what we get in the transfer portal. That offensive line isn't going to look that much worse, especially with coaches like Coach Schmidt and Coach Biedenbaugh, uh, the offensive line coach B, Co- uh, Coach B, and then uh, Coach Schmidt, the strength and conditioning coach. You, know, you got those guys training these guys up there up front, and then the wide receiver room being as deep as it is to help Dylan or to help. Uh, well, why am I drawing a blank now? I want to say Dylan Gabriel, Arnold, uh, Jackson Arnold. Jackson Kept on, Arnold yeah. Every time I wanted to say Jackson Arnold, I, Dylan Gabriel was coming to my brain. <laughs> uh, I miss him. I, I'm sad that he went over to Oregon, but yeah. good luck to him. But Jackson Arnold, a lot of people writing him off. You got to realize he he took a lot of reps last year in practice. He he's got he's got to learn a new a new uh, playbook. So maybe that's something to be worried about. But he's not a first year quarterback. Oh, keep on counting my Sooners out. I feel like we can reach 10 wins in the SEC this year. That's that's like me feeling really good about our season. Worst case scenario, we have eight wins. Yeah. I'm regardless, I'm smashing that over on, on that seven and a half win total. Anyways, do like seeing Texas up there. I just don't know how you look away from Georgia. So I like the odds there. Uh I'm surprised at LSU at number five. Uh and also having Missouri at plus fourteen hundred and Oklahoma at plus four thousand. Seems a little ridiculous to me because Ouch. I love I love Drinkwitz I love Drink and what he's doing over there I love uh, you know they they had Theo Weiss last year uh, let's see they they still have Luther Burden if my memory serves me correctly yeah. uh, they still got Brady Cook if memory serves me correctly uh, do they still have that white dude at, at running back he was a dog I can't I can't remember who that was uh, I don't remember, but, but regardless I know that they've got some dogs over there that are coming back but like you know a twenty six hundred gap. Between them and Oklahoma, I'm not That's buying. Harsh. It. I'm not. I'm not saying that they they won't b- beat Oklahoma this upcoming year. We got to go to Columbia. Yeah, that's a different stadium than the last time that Oklahoma was there. Mm. But are they that much better than Oklahoma? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think talent wise, I'm giving Oklahoma the upper edge. Yeah, when I you would look too. at overall standpoint and where they're at with their program. Sure, I can understand giving the slight edge to Missouri, but just going to put four thousand. You realize well, you just lost half your team, so and you're the you Aggies. You're the Aggies. Who the? What do you have left? Yeah, I, I'm out. I'm out. Some of these odds don't make sense to me. No, I like I like you counting my team out though because I think too many times Oklahoma's the top dog, and they come in there starting off six and zero, and they feel good about themselves, and then they lose to a Kansas, they lose to an Oklahoma State, and you know, not making excuses, but Oklahoma State game, you can make some you can make some excuses there. Also, yeah. a lot of people don't recognize the fact that Kansas played an outstanding game against Oklahoma. Got to give it to uh, Leipold and what he did in that game. But that was also after a long delay in the middle of that game. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to throw that out there. But George is going to win the SEC, I feel like. It's it's hard. You, you look at those dogs, and then I saw that they got a, rec- a recruit over at 6'11", to be on the offensive line. The tallest dude in college, college football. Like, obvious, Georgia is going to be the top dog in the SEC. But, I mean, 
Going off to uh, to a little bit of an Oklahoma here. I mean, realistically, you look into their first their first legit year into the SEC. They get that nine ten win season. That's to them has to feel like they just won a national championship. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm I get what you're saying, and I, I yeah. appreciate that kind of, that thought. Ten wins feels like it feels like we won the conference. Ten that, wins feels that way. Nine was like. We we we, ex- we just, met our expectations. Right. Eight wins feels like man, like it's the SEC though, so you can't be mad about it. Yeah. If we, if we hit that under at seven wins, man, I'm I'm upset about that extension. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But at, at least you know what I'm talking. At least you know I'm trying to get out there a little bit. I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I get. But like, I get yeah. But like overall, I mean, like we said, Georgia's job. Georgia's gonna be the top dog in the SEC. I mean, if I had to say another team outside of Georgia, I could definitely see L. I'm surprised with where they put LSU a little bit, but I mean, you got to look at what they have to go against. And now everyone is wondering what Alabama is going to be like, obviously without the Nick Saban. I mean, I've heard, yeah, I've, I mean, talked to, I've talked well, to people and they say that Alabama is going to be trash. I look, I'm like, slow your roll here. This yeah, is I mean, I don't, Alabama. You got to realize Saban still got his, his thumbprint on that, that program. Exactly. You know, he's still got his DNA in that program. Um, but you know, like it, just looking at like Tennessee being, you know, the the same odds as Missouri and below Texas A and M or LSU seems a little crazy to me. I feel like Tennessee's right up there with Ole Miss, Texas, and Georgia yeah. for you know maybe not Georgia. I'd say Ole Miss and Texas. Miss, Texas. Tennessee's right in that group. Yeah. So, man, I don't know. It's some of these odds in the SEC are weird. But you also have to recognize it's the SEC, and anything can happen. It, yeah. is, it is a deep conference, uh, and and mm-hmm. that's something I was talking to Blake about. Is that you know it's it's hard to admit that on the outside looking in, but you know it's it's also hard to deny it even on the outside looking in. So very excited to see uh, we're gonna we're gonna have more for our predictions and stuff like that whenever we get closer to the season. We're not gonna make any predictions right now. We're not we're not gonna go crazy and start making some some you know putting some money on anything uh, unless it's Utah to win the Big Twelve because I'm kind of feeling good about that one. Hey, hey but, 50K is 50K. <laughs> uh, on the no no not not the. Who was that that we were just talking about? Uh, Stanford. Oh, that was Stanford. Yeah, yeah. That was Stanford. Okay. But yeah. Utah. I mean, what was Utah? What did I say they were? Um, plus. Big 12. Plus 310. Yeah, plus 310. I, I, like, I like that odd. I like yeah. those odds. That's a good uh, odd. Plus, it looks like plus 320 over on DraftKings. Um, 325, I see. So, yeah, they're some, kind of all over the place. Good odd overall. Yeah. Uh, but we're not going to put any, any predictions yet. Stay tuned. Like I said, also to stay tuned for Thursday. We hope to have Blake on. If not, we'll just kind of let him know and inform him on what we're, what we're planning there. We're also going to try to have the rules or, you know, the, the breakdown of what we're going to do by then, you know, kind of have a game plan for college football, 25, the video game dropping. Uh, we're very excited about that, but we're going to pick our teams on the Thursday episode. So stay tuned for that. Uh, as long as we can get on here and record for you guys, we're busy men. Uh, so we try to get on here as much as we can, but we're going to make sure that we get our teams picked this week. So stay tuned for that. We're also going to have a live show on Friday uh, as long as everything goes to plan. So we hope to see you guys there. Uh, we're very excited for that. And we're very excited just for college football season to be back already. Uh, I think I saw like we're under, under, under 60 under, days. Yeah, uh, under 60 days. Getting close to around the 50-day mark. Yeah. Um, so I don't have the number pulled up right in front of me, but we're getting close, guys. Very close. Uh, only like a month and a half away or something like that. Just about. Two months max. So, yeah. So very close. Excited. That is the best Better time of year. Tip. Best time of year. Um, but we thank everybody so much for watching on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and comment down below. Uh, that helps us out so much. Uh, I want to remind everybody to also follow us on social media. You can like us, uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, all that fun stuff. We're also on the TikToks as well, so you can go check us out over there. If you're listening on an Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast, give us that five-star review. That's the best way to help us over on those platforms. And a reminder to everybody as well, uh, just because I had to make sure to get some of mine in. We've got new merch ever since joining Herd at Sports. We, we got them, to, you know, the Herd at team put together an awesome merchandise store for us Uh, so we're 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 ditching the old logo and everything and uh, transitioning over to the new so get some merch in Uh, you can go over to rising2.com to check out all of our stuff uh, and the merch shop should be on there as well you can go to rising2.com slash shop to find everything in there but we thank everybody so much for all the love all the support we'll catch you next time